Everything's after the ground. Oh, we might even pump that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah
one would think that that would wear on them. So I think the board should make an effort to pass this unanimous resolution that reads, a resolution in continuing support of the Dudley Police Department and the officers that honorably protect and serve the town. Whereas recent events that have received national attention have resulted in demonstrations and protests around the country regarding the use of force by law enforcement agencies. And whereas these recent incidents highlight the dangers that are faced by all law enforcement professionals during the course of their regular duties each and every day. And whereas the members of the Dudley Police Department provide an essential function for our community, serving to protect life and property. And whereas in light of recent negativity directed toward law enforcement nationally, there is a desire to reassure law enforcement officers that our citizens recognize the difficult and sometimes impossible job that they do in public service to all of us. And whereas the Dudley Board of Selectmen wishes to formally express support of and for the Dudley Police Department and all law enforcement agencies around the country, now therefore be a resolved by the Dudley Board of Selectmen elected by the citizens of Dudley and the County of Worcester, um, that they hereby express support for the Dudley Police Department and commend the department for an outstanding job that they do upholding professional standards and protecting the life and safety of the residents of Dudley. I'll make a motion to adopt that. Mr. Chairman, can I ask that the, <coughs> the, the mover uh, uh, insert the words after city of, uh, after, after the County of Worcester, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? I have no objection to that. I second the motion. Is there one word? It's already here. It's already here. It's here. No, it, it wasn't read. No. It wasn't read. I, I, I just skipped over the yeah, we just more more it that I read. Motion made in the second and third. Is there any discussion, changes, concerns? Nope. Mr. Fox. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with this. I think we are very fortunate to have the police department we have, the officers that we have, and the chief that we have. And I think Mr. Ruder is absolutely correct. I think police in general have gotten a lot of bad publicity. I know all of us have, as selectmen pretty much know what goes on in the life of a policeman every day because we get the chief's text messages, and I think they handle themselves professionally, and they would be commended. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Matsu. I just want to say, well done, well done, Jonathan. I know we get tied up in the day to day of uh, going through the different items of public business, <coughs> and it's good to take, a, take the time to recognize the job. So, so thanks. And thank you, Chief. Chief Lamb. I just want to thank the board. I think this is a really a remarkable thing. I appreciate the support and everything uh, for the members of the department. It is, you know, certainly it's a difficult time. We don't deal with some of the same issues that a lot of places deal with, uh, at least in the volume, but we have a lot of the uh, similar problems uh, that have faced all of the society today. And uh, uh, something like this goes a long way uh, for the men and women of the department. Because we're kind of like the offensive line in football. As long as everything's going well, nobody hears your name. But as long as something goes wrong, they, they call your name. So uh, it means a lot. And I just want to thank the board very much for this, uh, this uh, support. Else. Hearing on call to a vote, all in favor of the proclamation say aye. 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 Unanimous. <coughs> At this point, I'm going to go back to number six for the public hearing. <coughs> Proposed notice by law continues from 9 14, 2015, beginning at 6 38 p.m. I call the public hearing back in from recess. Mr. Balcones. <coughs> Board members, uh, so from your last meeting, you, there were a couple of changes that were suggested, and if you don't mind, I can walk you through what some of those are, rather than you just looking at a black piece of paper on the memory. So if you, if you look at uh, section one, devices to attract attention, which is section B, um, I inserted the words um, activities which have been duly authorized by the town of Dudley. So that last sentence um, indicates that the town needs to have a role in approving any type of activity that may run contrary to this section. 
um, bullets C, uh, 1C, which is radio, electronic devices, and televisions, shouting and whistling, and animal and bird noise are new. And the reason why I put those in is from the last meeting, the board made some comments about tightening up the sections related to residential noise. So, a little bit of research and found that there was a bunch of bylaws that had that. I just wanted to include those sections so that you would uh, you could have a discussion. <coughs> On the second page, go to section three, exemptions. Um, three A. It, uh, I inserted the words in the first line: snow removal. So originally the section read that exemptions were emergency vehicles and equipment, and I inserted the word snow removal because of some other concerns, not just snow removal from the town, but Citizens that are engaged in snow removal to be able to get food from work is important to recognize as an exemption. And if you go all the way down to 3F, um, noise caused by lawful activities related to hunting and fishing, those are suggesting that um, it's being The only other section that I put in is if you look at section 4 penalties, um, the original policy was drafted that there was a $300 per <coughs> offense fine and um, I just put in that the first offense would be a warning, second offense would be $100 and third in each offense after that would be a fine of $300 because again, they mentioned you two weeks ago, generally people comply when the bylaw is being brought to their attention. Um, you asked about enforcement authority and under the state law, the Board of Health, the Police Department, uh, and the building department are empowered to enforce any bylaw that would be created covering noise, so it doesn't need to be in there. Um, one thing that's not in here is uh, decibel meters and things like that, because when you start getting involved in that, then it, in my judgment, it gets a little bit off the beaten track in terms of enforcement. So, um, took the policy that you had, made some changes to it, wanted to alert the public that those were the changes and gave you an opportunity on this. Thank you. Mr. Malcolm, does this address commercial <clears throat> and or industrial zones? For example, if a business was receiving a night delivery on like a 53 footer that was backing up making noise, or if somebody's in an industrial zone that may require either periodic or you know non-reoccurring nighttime stuff. Maybe, or yeah, this, the bylaw are silent in terms of zoning and what zones may be exempted, but you raise a good point. Well, I wouldn't want to prohibit mm -hmm. I you know, think, I just use parking shop, for example, they got a delivery at night. Sure. Well, we have an industrial zone in town where some work needs to be done. It can't be done, obviously, continuously because we don't have it going on now. We don't want to start with it, but is there provisions for that? Or is there um, presently, the way the bylaw is written is that's not <coughs> concluded. How would that be addressed? Um, section 2 talks about commercial activities generating noise. Uh, talks about uh, idling of engines and vehicles. Um, uh, you could put in except as provided in um, zones. Uh, let's say in the industrial and the commercial zones as they're referred to in the town bylaw. That's the section or the area that they would be doing it in what's usually. Is that satisfactory everybody? Is that valid? Mr. Um, I believe that zoning should be included in this because I know I work for a company that was zoned industrial. It was Norton Company in Worcester and they ran 24-7 for 100 years. And I know Heel Machine did the same thing, and uh, Wyman Gordon did the same thing. So I would like to make sure that everything is covered before uh, we make sure we don't leave anybody out. I, so I would like to have a clause in there that allows the Board of Selectmen uh, slash highway commissioners uh, to grant waivers for exceptional circumstances. And I'm going to tell you why. There's no way I anticipate we're going to be able to in, uh, figure out ahead of time those issues that may come up. 
So I would like to see a clause in there under exemptions that provides us that caveat. The other thing I'd like to see is that this board, and I'm not making a motion, that this board not take act action on this until just prior to the uh, fall town election uh, to allow us to, to think about how we want to do this and what we want to do. Uh, do we want to come out in favor or do we just want to recommend that the people uh, <coughs> pass it? Do we want a motion that says that it, it, it will be completely reviewed and they, the, after one year or after 18 months or after two years? Because I'm telling you, there's going to be changes we're going to have to make because we didn't foresee something. So I would ask that those things be considered ultimately. Um, could I ask the Chief of Police to uh, explain the difference between the CMI that exists and a bylaw in terms of its enforceability? The basic CMI that's on file right now is, as I mentioned, noise meters and decibel meters are usually the main thing to check. Uh, and those are primarily done by the board to help, for the most part. And, like, discussions with the state on that are <coughs> just that simple fact. They loan meters and different things to the communities. Uh, and they do it for more like nuisance or chronic issues that have taken place. Some communities have kind of expanded it in some way, uh, and kind of made it more general, uh, but that's the way the most part of that law is, is handled right now. Is that something that we're, through the chair, is that something we're equipped to deal with right now, but we had a consistent nuisance that needed to be addressed through the CMR, could we do that right now? We can, I think the Board of Health had been doing that because I think what had happened was they would be getting the noise meters uh, because those things are very expensive, I think about $20,000 or $15,000, some kind of uh, huge figure. So the state has certain ones around and they can get access to them for it. And I think Mr. Purcell, like for example, there's a company down here on West Main Street that had a problem at one point and he was down there checking it with the, with the meter and no violation of law at that point. So uh, it can be done under those circumstances. Chief, your opinion. Is a comprehensive bio like this necessary, or is things the way they are okay? I mean, it's, I don't think it ever really hurts. Uh, but I would agree with Mr. Jo Mr. Joseph said, I think the one thing that we had in discussions before was that you want a lot of public input on it. You try to get as many of the problems ironed out ahead of time as you can. Um, because it is just, again, another, it's another tool. I like the fact that there's a warning provision in there for it because you can tell somebody about it and then if there's a cons consistent violation, then you can go back and uh, they can reach the fine. So there is that little provision in there for that. So. so again, it's another tool. I don't see a real problem with it. Uh, but again, I think you, you just have to make sure that, that people have enough input and uh, all the discussion on it at that point. I also recommend too that uh, you know, either town council or even maybe the AG's office to give an opinion on it just to make sure who's going to pass. And they hate to see the whole effort go through the town meeting and then you have to get rejected at the state level that it's not going to go through. Um, uh, the only other thing I, I, I said there, I don't know if, uh, if it's part of it or it's part of road bylaws, but uh, uh, as long as there's an appeal process, because that is one thing people have, and I think our administrator has designated the uh, hearings officer for the town. <coughs> So I don't know if that has to be included as a clause in there or if that's yeah, already included in our main bylaws as far as an appeals process to uh, do that. And I think the good thing is that they fall under the, what they call the 21D provisions. If a person doesn't pay the fine, it turns into criminal automatically, which is one of the problems we ran into the marijuana statute. As it's written, those fines don't get into that. So we have to go to a small claims court route to collect fees. Whereas uh, with this being under the bylaw, as long as it falls under those 21D provisions, similar to like a dog license, unlicensed dog, that can get turned over to the court, and then if the person still fails to pay, they can the you know, fine can be recouped at that point. So, Mr. Belcones, what are we looking at for a time frame to get something finalized for the warrant? Uh, we need to be able to pull something together within the next couple of weeks. Friday we'll meeting on the fifth. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yep. That's if <coughs> you put it before the voters at the fall meeting. That's right. Okay. This class. Okay. I think uh, the chief made some very good points. Uh, when we do come up with our final draft and final recommendation, um, that we do run it by town council and possibly the attorney general's office to make sure that everything we do, we make sure we're doing it legally rather than come up with something and find out we 
having to <coughs> conclude some things. So I think some good points were made in uh, the Chief's correspondence. Uh, no, I mean, I think I like Mr. Joseph's idea about um, letting everything get added in there and then we can decide whether we will support this as a board. I and mean, I still maintain that we have a lot of laws on the books and you know, <coughs> the more and more stuff we keep adding, the more chances for uh, pitting neighbors against neighbors. So I just get to be real careful with something like this. I agree. My, my opinion hasn't changed. I think we should leave it up to discretion. Seeing that it hasn't been an issue, a major issue to this point. So, no other comments on the board. I'll open up to the public, and we're going to ask people to come up and sit at the chair. Uh, cameras in the back. Not like to have a podium like we do at the town hall. So, I'd really like to speak on the bylaw. And I'll come up, sir. Just need to identify yourself. Nice shirt. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, my name's John Harden. I'm a Dudley resident. I have an ongoing issue with the noise problems. I live on Office Hill Road, which uh, is zoned, um, I believe, for business. However, on my road, um, it's all multi-families. Uh, so I feel that it's an old a zoning issue because um, what's going on right now is I have there's a company, a trash company in town that I tried to reason with um, pretty much every Tuesday morning approximately between the uh, quarter of six in the morning. It's like the circus in my neighborhood. The Pratt trucking comes along. They come all the way and they do a bunch of dumpsters right around my house. I have two young children at my house, constantly woken up. I notified Pratt Trucking. They said they, they were allowed to start pickups uh, in commercial areas uh, by, at 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I was told that the, uh, disturbing the peace would be from 7 a.m. to 10 at night for any noise. Um, they're clearly doing this earlier than they should. Uh, they stopped for about three weeks and then it started up again. So I haven't called the police, the Dudley police. I don't want to be that guy, but I saw this meeting and I figured I'd take the opportunity to address this issue. Uh, can't reason with these people. Um, I also, in, in regards to the overlap of the zoning, uh, two weeks ago I um, had a neighbor Who's, he rents one of the, one of the multi families. He's deciding to park his uh, large, large commercial dump truck right in front of my house across the street. Um, and again, <coughs> I talked to Nelson Burlingame, and he checked the zoning and he says, I can't do anything, John. It's, it's zoned for business. Uh, if you go up on Office Hill Road, take a look around and see all the multi-families and how many people are living in these houses. And to have this truck, and this guy leaves at 5.30 in the morning, every morning, wakes everybody up, because um, he, he starts and rumble, boom, 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 and then you hear the, the brakes go and whatnot. And then, there's also an issue with, I'm surrounded by people that have commercial vehicles with backup vehicles. Oh. Which I, I am certain they're louder than the decibel, legal decibel limits for courts. I mean, and they're leaving it coming all hours. It, it's like a circus in town. Right? I've lived in Dudley for years and never had any problems. And all of a sudden, it's like I'm trapped into it. And that's about all I have to say. And I, I really, um, it, as far as the zoning goes, I think that's, that should be addressed as far as, yeah, yeah, the mill's down there, and that's a, a commercial zone because of the mill, but when you come further up, it's all multifamilies. And I, I think it's unfair that we have to be subjected to all this thoughts. And that's it. That's all. Is it all cool? Is there any suggestions for that? So, well, I mean, it's been building for quite a while, and I really don't want it, like I said, I don't need to complain or call the police and, and waste their time. And again, with neighbors and bad feelings, you try to lay low and whatnot, but. 
I'm kind know. of frustrated right now. Yeah. You know, get the right thing coming. Up. Okay, great. I'll do it in a second. Mr. Balcones, can we get an opinion from Nelson concerning this? In terms of zoning? Right. Because I, I think part of the issue is going to be probably business on the other side. Smallfield Ave, because the mill is, yeah. the mill is in business at that mill conversion overlay. I think he's right. I think it probably goes back years. It was always business. So we need to get an opinion from Nelson in writing. Yeah. I think if any one of the selectmen had a big dump truck, I'm not talking about a little tiny dump truck, I'm talking about a huge commercial dump truck, parked right in front of the house every day, I, I don't think you guys would like it at all. But I, I, I really wish you could put yourself in my spot. So. Chief, is there any redress for that? I have to look at it uh, a little bit more. Uh, but that is one of the things, too. Again, parking the vehicles and other things like that, you know, and what's allowed, what's not allowed. Um, I have to look at it. Really. I'd like to be able to find Nelson on that too. Right, I want to find out if that's true. Six, uh, that's the first I've ever heard trash pickup, for example, can be done at six in the morning. Yeah. I'm not saying they, that it can or can't. I don't know. They told me right out. They said they can do commercial properties in the town of Dudley beginning at six a.m. It's and that's why he's doing the ones which are commercial around me. But but if you listen to the dogs, the slam, it's crazy. It? It's like clockwork right around the house. It wakes up everybody and it's crazy. John, do you have an e email address that you want to no, don't share it out? Give it to the administrator. I can do that, too. I'll call the office tomorrow. Absolutely. I'll provide your information and they'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Anybody else? Sir. Okay. Well, you know me. <laughs> My name is Ronald Chickering. Uh, I'm here. I agree with Mr. Massey. I think we have enough laws on the books to cover it. Chief, I think you've done an excellent job, and a few chiefs in the past have done an excellent job. Uh, I can't see passing something that, uh, <coughs> and then fixing it. I'm sorry, uh, we have an administration in Washington now that said that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm dead set against it. Uh, and I've talked to a lot of people that I know, and they're against it too. I think the chief can is, can do an excellent job with what's on the books now. Uh, you know, kind of smacks of 1984. Uh, more and more laws you get, the more restrictive you are for people. We need less laws now. You mean you mean the book, not the uh... The book, yes. The book. <laughs> the book. <laughs> I think uh, a lot of us old duffers had to read that when we were in school. So, but uh, you know, I I want to be on record as saying that I'm against against it. Okay, right. Mr. Former Minnesota in town. Well, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. I hope Thanks, Ronnie. Thank you. Anybody else? read it in the newspaper about the noise ordinance and I didn't know if it particularly covered like um, musical instruments. Uh, I've got two sons that are marching band and I didn't know if that would affect them being able to practice outside as well as the drum set. Um, we've always been very respectful to keep it like during the day, never at night or too early when they're teenagers. <laughs> And then the other question is, during the winter, with the snow blow, the, the remover, if we have a, a tractor with an attachment on it, is there a certain time that we'll be able to snow blow? My husband has to be to work for seven, so he usually does it before that. Will that affect him being able to do that? The removal of the snow is covered as allowed, right? Yeah, so if you, if you look at the uh, second page, exemptions, emergency vehicles, equipment, and snow removal activities. So that, that, that piece is easy for us to address. And then that one eight, Craig? That would involve the, the drums and any musical instruments. They're allowed, um, not allowed between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. Okay, perfect. Well, Sunday through Thursday and 11 to 7 on Friday and Saturday. Correct. 
and we wanted to make sure that the town matching band could play, so we put in that, that would be accepted. Awesome. Good for there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep playing. Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody else? This is Humphrey. <laughs> Um, Pam Humphrey, I just have one quick question. Why did this, why was this brought up? Has there really been a problem in town, or why was it, because I agree with these guys, that it's not broke, you know? Yeah. Um, it was brought up initially, I, I brought it up initially, in the absence of the police having the ability to enforce no, uh, any sort of noise. And that they don't have that, it's a complaint, no. they got a complaint, they go and... It's not enforceable. They can try to talk them down, but it's not enforceable. Um, the first speaker that was up there mentioned that if the selectmen had the problem in front of their houses, I know. I have no noise at all. I hear is crickets in front of my house. And so I'm not anxious to add more lies to the books. Mm -hmm. But I am anxious to um, give the police the ability to tell people, knock it off. It's time to be quiet now late at night when it's bothering people who have school age kids that need to get up in the morning. So there is there. a problem in town? There is a problem. I think the chief put together a list of of straight noise violations calls. They're not violations because there's no law to violate. Again, I'm not anxious to pass any law. What is what gives the town meeting the ability to pass any law. But when when the police go to someone's house and they they can't tell them to be quiet, or they don't cooperate, but they decide not to be quiet. Where do we go from there? It's interesting that nobody who called me to complain told the past the has come to any one of these meetings they hear. So nobody who's called to complain. And anybody was called anybody's called it was a week or two, um, a year ago, where I was getting called almost nightly. And then the police chief was getting called for me pretty, you know, almost nightly as well. And he was frustrated. He wanted to talk to the people who were causing the problem. And every day it was resolved. And then it wasn't the next night. Resolved, it wasn't the next night. So in order to start a discussion about it, I drafted this bylaw. It died on the vine maybe two or three months ago, I would say. And it was brought back up. Now this is a continuation of our second hearing. And I see no one who's in support of it. So the first speaker, I think, um, who's his name, John? John, yeah. He had a good point where it was probably a zoning issue where he was, not necessarily a law that needed to be added. So I'm here to listen to everybody mm -hmm. and see where it goes from there. I just, I guess I wasn't aware that there was a huge, huge. No, it's, it's not. not. So, it's not a huge. So I mean, it, once it's again, not. why they? I agree with. No. Okay. Why well, well, it's it just 18, then it does make more. Well, criminal, eighteen month but. period. Those forty four calls that could be classified as noise complaints. So forty four calls, eighteen months. There are other calls that could be classified as a noise complaint as part of the call, but it wasn't a strict noise mm -hmm. complaint. So there is an issue that, that exists if you look into it. Mm -hmm. But it's very isolated from one area of town for the most part. Okay. Chief, what's the redress now of that? Like, if the guys come up and they say, they're too loud, need to tone it down, they leave, they come back, 20 minutes later, half hour, the same thing. What, what well, it's disturbing the peace, that'd be, so it'd be a criminal, yeah, it'd be a criminal offense at that point. Yeah. So I think, part, I think part of this was probably to try to get something that might be like a non-criminal offense or something else. And another layer of that. Disturbing, well, disturbing well, the peace. Well, disturbing well, the peace. Well, the peace the time, that's the warning, right? Yeah, well, I mean, technically, you don't necessarily need a warning for disturbing the peace. I mean, that could be happening right then and there. Mm -hmm. For the most part, you know, generally, especially if it's, a, if it's a situation where a person has like a loud radio or a party going on, you want to have an opportunity to quell that that situation and calm down. Yeah. If you have to go back again the second time, well, then that would be the issue. But it could be at any any particular time. Mm -hmm. And disturbing peace too could be any time of the day or night. I mean, there's no set hours on disturbing the peace, so it depends what the action is, and it's always on a case by case basis. So I think something like this would just provide a basically like a just civil a civil offense as opposed to a criminal charge. I think that would be what this what this is looking at. That's 
bucks. Um, I just don't want to see that we put one neighbor against another neighbor and we because of the law, mm -hmm. because of the restriction. And uh, one of the examples I use is uh, your neighbor has a pool party. And you go and you tell him you're supposed to end your pool party at 9 o'clock at night or whatever. And it's now 9.15. Now you've got one neighbor mad at another neighbor and vice versa. And the issue with the snowblowers in the morning because my wife has to get to work early. And so I had some concerns. I do want to make sure that town council looks at it. I do think we have to tweak it more if it's going to happen. And I do think the attorney general should look at it to make sure that what we're doing is legal. And, but yeah, right now, I don't, I'm not I'm not convinced we have a major problem. Right. I guess that's what my, mm -hmm. my thing is, too. If we don't need it, then mm -hmm. it's just one more law. Mr. Jeff. Yeah, you know, I, I said at the beginning of the top of this discussion on this topic that uh, I had some real concerns about what we're going to leave out, what we're going to put in, how much this thing is going to be tweaked. And as I, I listen to the comments, it is so good to have public input. I advocated for having public hearing, and someone said that obviously it's not an issue because no one showed up to speak. Well, that has been proven untrue tonight. I'm also cognizant of the amount of work that Mr. Ruda has put into this, and it has been a substantial amount of work, and the amount of work that the town administrator has put in. And I I want to be careful not to be ungrateful for what they've done. But I've come to a point where I don't think there should be nothing. I disagree. Because there have been complaints and there are complaints. And there will continue to be complaints. We didn't think there was there was a need. Some people sneered at the yard sale policy and yet we got a bunch of people whose personal lives have been impacted by an ongoing yard sale policy which is basically a business liquidation on Village Street. For those people, that policy was worth it. But in this case, I think we should be minimalist and I think we should simply, simply ask the people to support a bylaw that says that no one has a right to disturb the peace and tranquility of someone else. And that if they have a complaint, this is who they go to. And they are, if they are issued a warning or instruction by the police department, they are required to follow it. And then, Chief, I'd like to have you and the town administrator get together and come up with a misdemeanor terminology that's appropriate to fail to follow the instructions of the police. I think that's where we should stop. Despite all the work, I don't think we should go in to finding whether a six-string guitar is not okay and a 12-string is or vice versa. All right? I think we need to make it a minimalist policy and let's tweak it as we need to. Let's not overdo it. But then again, don't we policy instead of a bylaw? Because a bylaw, we're trying to change it. Well, we could do a policy. But if we did a policy, it is only in effect for the term of that Board of Selectmen. It would have to be re-supported uh, by the next Board of Selectmen, which would be every year, because we have new selectmen coming in every year. A bylaw that is generically worded, that is reasonable to enforce, that basically enhances the quality of life, bang. That's all we need. And then the selectmen can develop from year to year a policy of enforcement based on the initial advice we get from the town administrator and the chief. The policy of what, how it would be enforced. That's a decision of the board of selectmen. So by putting a generic bylaw into effect that everyone can live with, but make the enforcement subject to annual review by the board of selectmen, you can deal with it if it's a major problem or if it's a non-problem. And that gives us the flexibility we need. But it's not a motion, that's just what I would like to see happen when we do put something before the people. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Box. I, I want to comment also. I think Selectman Ruler and our town administrator certainly has put a a lot of time, a lot of thought, a lot of effort into this, and no way should they 
think that this that we don't appreciate the effort that they have to put into it. We do. Other speakers, Steve. Somebody else being invited. Sorry. Excuse me. Thank you. Hi, Mike. Uh, 20 from South Drum. I just want to synthesize a little bit with John over there on the, uh, the noise. I live on 131, and I'm up every night because either a truck's coming down, like a Jake Brake on or something like that, but I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Um, as far as a town bylaw, I was looking at some of the other towns that have implemented one of these bylaws. Um, like just, I was just reading the Spencer bylaws. It's 10 pages long, yeah. okay? So you can start off with a, a simple bylaw, but this could mushroom because everybody's gonna want to have a little carve out if they get a warning for this, so yeah, just to lay it on. I agree, I don't want to do so, that. But it, it could lead to constantly being on the, on the warrant to, to add something to that bylaw. And theirs is 10 pages, it's I think the Worcester one, but all 20 pages long. But there's a car lot for everybody, so just let you know that. And everyone sure. knows that the quality of life both Spencer and Worcester have been approved by those bylaws. Well, I'm sure they have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else like to speak? Sir. Ted Timmons, New Boston Road. I'm sorry, who are you? Ted Timmons, New Boston Road. How are you? Good. Good. Um, I agree with giving the police something. Just to be able to show up and say, please quiet down to me. I mean, to, to be able to give someone a written warning, usually, in my experience, in my uh, professional life, that usually works. Um, you know, putting, putting neighbors against neighbors. If there's a neighbor that's inconsiderate or rude, the neighbors already get each other. So, I mean, you know, a pool party on a Saturday, that's fine, but Saturday, Sunday, <coughs> every weekend, maybe not. Um, I live on a road with this conservation land. Um, there's not supposed to be any uh, ATVs or dirt <coughs> in that area. There always is. It's loud. There's a lot that I want. Um, I had to tell the chief about some uh, firearms and explosives going on on Sunday morning. So, you know, things like that, you know, come down, you know, the last Sunday is where noise is a problem. Yeah. And so for the cops to show up and, and say, please quiet down and leave without with no, with no teeth, with no bite to it, I think there's a problem. Are we wanting? What's the big deal? I mean, it's not like you got to get out of the prison. Whereas if you do go with uh, the other, you do have a criminal charge against them. I don't know too many police that want to do that to their you know, potential neighbor that was in town. Uh, they don't have to. But given some of the people wanting to go around it all, I'm uh, fine. I don't see any problem with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Anybody else? Seeing none, I have a public hearing close, 7 12. Mr. Belkunas, but how do you want to proceed? Well, we've been directed by the board to refer the matter to town council, specifically to have council look into uh, adding language concerning the fields that was mentioned by the chief of police, and to run and review it um, with regard to the attorney general. I mean, we can at least get back a version from council whether this file is full water and whether it would be something that would be um, allowed. I think it's. Pretty common. I mean, there was nothing in here that was seem to indicate any major issues <coughs> other than the appeal section, which seems to be missing. So, give me an opportunity to do so. Can we address uh, commercial industrial also? Well? Yeah, so. and, and note that uh, we have to, you know, section two, um, <coughs> how we deal with the issue of noise within the commercial industrial zone outside of the hours. John, anything with that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we, I mean, I, I, I appreciate, everybody appreciates that Greg and I have done a little bit more work on this draft, and, but as I said at the beginning of the hearing, we were looking to get a conversation going, and I think we clearly have one. So we've accomplished that goal already. Whether this thing is destined to hit the shredder, 
for hit the town hall town meeting floor is uh, is really the size of the point. But let's get a perfect version. If we're, we're going to go to the town hall floor, let's get a perfect version of it. Or something that we can we can all support. Because right now, from what I've heard, you know, lack of enthusiasm, and I see, I wouldn't support this version. For being clientele. Mr. Chairman, yes. I would I would uh, urge that we not send this uh, two plus page document with the specificity to town council because they're going to spend time on it mm -hmm. and they're going to charge us the reasonable negotiated hourly rate. I think it's too big. I think it needs to be at best minimalist. I think it needs to be a general statement that, as the last speaker said, that provides some teeth. <coughs> I'm not sure it should have any specificity as a bylaw, but that the board should take a policy. So I would not vote for this as it's written. I would vote probably for something that is a, a general statement that can be lived within and worked under the idiot different points of select. I'm okay. I, I just, if I were to vote tonight, I would not vote for it. So, I, I agree with you know, Paul um, and Jonathan. And just, uh, I think, minimalist, if, if we are going to do something, it's going to be as small and small as possible. Okay. I, feel like, I feel like this is the same way I felt with the answers. Oh, you know, don't even use that on the answer. Mr. Jim, this, this, this whole process reminds me of a year or two ago when we came out in support of a two and a half cap on exactly. education spending. And the, the knee jerk reaction was that the entire board was anti education. Me with two teachers and my three teachers, four teachers in my family, three kids in school. Mr. Joseph with his academic background. You know, it, it, it took to to work it to such a degree. I want to make it clear: this was to begin a conversation, just like the education cap was, and it's an ongoing conversation. And there are certain ways that we need to go about it, and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. so we'll continue to let this document evolve. We'll make a decision if we want to move forward in the fall or the spring, or make a stricter policy. We appreciate everyone coming out tonight. I mean, they only got a half a dozen speakers, but that's a half a dozen more than we had before. So thank you all for your time. Any other comments and concerns, you can address them to the Selectman's office, either email or by phone, and they'll get those opinions on our agenda. Or you can come back at any time and voice your opinions again. We appreciate it. Thank you. We move on to 8B, police department. Chief Wayne, vacancies for part-time police. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just asked the board to uh, declare up to five part-time openings on the uh, police department and activate the evaluation committee. Uh, as you know, we've made some full-time appointments in the last uh, year, and we've also got some people that have left, and we had a test in June, so it's just a process of getting that, uh, that rolling again. So the first step in the process is for the board to declare openings. Uh, if you look at this point, maybe it's three, but I think if you can keep doing that five number, I think that's something. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we declare uh, up to an authorized chief to fill uh, five part time police openings and to activate the police evaluation. Second. Motion by Mr. Joseph, second by Mr. Massey. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, stay high. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Board of Health seeking permission to use Clinton Wood Fund, the amount of $767 for Harrington Memorial Health Services. August 2015, what is the pleasure? Don't move. Moved by Mr. Rossi, second by Mr. Fox. Any questions or concerns? Anyone on favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Poll move policy, vote amended changes. Mr. Valconis. Board members, from your, um, your last meeting, you requested that there be some additional language added to the poll move policy. Um, So if you look at the uh, bullet number two under requirements, 
And sort of the language, um, the original language stated activities are limited to the hours of 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. The following has been added. The board selectman at, at its discretion so I've determined which three hour period will apply during this time period. Provides more specificity based yeah. on what you asked for. That's perfect. perfect. No, of course, we want to put a, uh, another caveat in this thing. Uh, submission of an application is my guarantee approval. I don't want somebody coming forward saying, well, I put it for why can I have it? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Joseph. Can I ask that you specifically make a motion as to the language and where you want that inserted so we can take a vote on that, on the amended policy tonight? I just want to, I'm asking Greg if he thinks that's a good idea. I do. Where would the board like to see that put in? Under that make an 11 and put under? On the procedure, maybe? I think it's a good idea. A lot of new sentence on the last yes. portion of the procedure. Yes. Or you could put it at the very end of procedure, last sentence of yep. procedure. Right. That's right. But so would the language be something to the effect um, submit submit submittal of an application does not guarantee approval by the board? Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that specific enough? Submittal. Second. Submission. Yeah, submission. An application so, does not guarantee approval by the board of so. Insert that language. We have a vote to amend the policy as presented. There are motion to amend. I make the motion to amend the sentence. Having the sentence that I brought up. Second. Sorry, second. Multiple seconds. Any further questions? I, I want to be sure Michelle has the language and where she's going to put it. We have it. Mm -hmm. so we have uh, at the end of the procedure, submission of an application does not guarantee approval by the board of selectmen. Okay. Period. This, this vote is strictly on the amendment. Yep. On the amendment. All in favor, state aye. 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 Unanimous. How we vote on the entire policy as amendment? Mr. Chairman, Mr. could I ask that we label this document uh, with today's date? And that we approve, uh, I hope that we approve the town of Dudley toll booth boot drive collection policy dated September 28, 2015. Motion made. Seconded by Mr. Fox. Yeah, I see it. it. It is down there. Yeah. Any further questions? Every member all in favor of state aye. 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 Unanimous. Mr. Bell Kunis, GPS policy. Well, they drafted a minimalist GPS policy involving town vehicles. And the policy states uh, <coughs> purpose, uh, which is to provide for greater accountability and management of house food resources. Secondly, to promote fuel efficiency. Third, to uh, improve driver safety. <coughs> and then D, to provide proof of location in the event of such location is unequivocally necessary. The policy reads, the town of Dudley may install GPS devices on any municipal vehicle. As of January 1, 2016, any new vehicle purchase shall be equipped with a GPS device. The communication shall be through the town administrator consulting consultation with the board of selectmen. And further, the policy states that employees of any vehicle can't bring this set of devices. I think it's um, the direction that many cities are going to go in post for accountability. Any questions to the administrator? Any questions with the policy? No. Hearing none, Chair, I'll obtain a motion to accept the town vehicle GPS so policy amended with, second. Second. amended with the date 928 2015. Mr. Joseph, motion seconded by Mr. Fox and Mr. Massey. All in favor, state aye. Aye, aye. Unanimous. Pilot policy. Mr. Okay, Mr. Can I ask the private discussion that this be tabled? So that we can examine it more, more, more closely, please. I don't think the town administrator will object. No objection. Board members? No objection. 8B, Town Beach, after action report, Mr. Valkunas, and I'm going to have the police chief come up. Town Beach, um, I've given you some recommendations in terms of how the beach was. Um, this past year, and as part of that, it included the number of the incident reports that the police department has provided us. I want to thank the chief and his staff because as you go through the report, you'll see that they're very diligently um, out and looking at the town beach 
um, at all hours of the evening, and, and that certainly is appreciated. The, the, the after action report that they put together, um, the beach season um, starts when school ended at, uh, in late June, and our last date of operation was on, on August 27th. However, the complaints about the beach activity really began with Memorial Day weekend. And you'll recall that you received the letter from, um, I believe it was Mrs. I, back uh, on Memorial Day stating that there were a number of people that were there and they were causing the disturbance. And, and so um, what I've suggested here is that we look to change the how the beach is operated. Um, the reason why I feel that the, the change needs to be made is we need to provide for the highest degree of public safety that we possibly can. And we also need to ensure um, reasonable quiet for our residents who deliver in the area. So one of the proposals that I have, I love my um, five of them here. And um, the first is, um, I'm going to start in a little bit different order than they are here, is that the funding for the operation of the beach, uh, we should propose an article on town meeting versus fundraising. The reason why I say that is fundraising has, has been fantastic. But like anything else, fundraising activities begin to drop off after a few years. This year we did incur a deficit in the beach account of $683, so we needed to address that as based upon two lifeguards, 32 hours a week. So I feel that going forward, the town should really commit to whether they want to operate a beach or not. And the way to do that is by putting a proposal before town meeting um, and the amount of money would be about $7,000 to ensure that the beach would operate going forward. So that's the, the first thought that I have. Um, the second thought is that the beach should be for Dudley residents and it should be uh, admission for non-residents of those people who purchase a season pass. So the Dudley residents would be free because the taxpayers have really voted the money through the town meeting and there's no reason to duplicate and charge those people a second time. And that will encourage people who um, may not want to go to the beach right now. And then for non-residents, those people who would come forward and want to purchase a season pass, similar to the practice that they have in Webster. Hopefully less controversial, but I know that Webster's done a lot of scheduling, a lot of discussion about fees and non-resident um, parking. The second recommendation, which is kind of tied to it, and, and these, the, they all, one, two, and three need to go together. Um, I feel that the, the real issue is parking. And you can't, you can't restrict um, the beach to town residents if you continue to have parking behind the Mason Road School. In my judgment, it doesn't work. Um, people come in, there's no access, there's no gate. There's no money to hire guards. People say, oh, we can hire a guard. We can have wrist bracelets. It's not going to work in practicality. Say. There is an area off of Lakeview Avenue. As you drive in, there's a gate. If that gate were to be open and that area to the right where there's a berm between the berm and the stone wall would it be gravel i have no doubt that you could probably fit up those 20 vehicles in there and that would be the area that we see being reserved and it would be very easy to enforce that area by certainly limiting parking to that area so that's my second recommendation my third recommendation as i alluded to would be to um, eliminate the parking behind the racing road school it, it uh, you can't really do much when that parking area is there. And um, it, it should be closed off, it should be blocked off. The beach was open, school was open. Um, there's a mix of people that come through and use that. There's an elementary school that's there. There are all types of concerns that I particularly have on that. Fourthly, um, video cameras. We should install video cameras on the beach. Uh, and those will be. Um, access to the town's website. So if you want to take a look at the beach 24 hours a day, seven days a week to see what's going on, the more eyes that look out for it, the better. Uh, my thought is is that uh, Dudley families should be able to use the beach at no cost and that uh, by allowing Dudley residents to use it, the taxpayers who support it, um, we can take it back. And I mean by take it back because there were a lot of incidents this past year. And I went down there every single week and sat there and watched what was going on. And I can assure you when I was there, everyone looked at the guy with the suit and tie, <laughs> and they were on their best behavior. 
But I know when I wasn't there, there were a lot of things that went on. If you read through the reports, you'll see incidents where there were people in the water. And one of the ones that I chuckle at, someone called the police department and said the lifeguard whistled people to get out of the water at the end of the day and there were 50 people in the water. That's our policy. The policy is two lifeguards on duty, 6 o'clock comes or closing time comes, whistle it, blow the whistle, everyone out of the water. The lifeguard said, go out, lock up and close up. So the people will come back and then the police department is obviously responsible. So those are my thoughts. I, I think that in terms of operating the beach, I think that these ideas have merit. If you agree, then we'll flush out a more detailed plan of how we get there with more detail for your approval. But at least I wanted to present in concept what I think would work for the council. Well, you know, we have this list here of 90, 98, but I'm scanning through them again, I did before. I bet you over half of them are all clear, which is good. I mean, there's some in there that obviously needs some addressing. There's a lot of them that are just all clear. You know, guys going down at different times, which is great. I mean, I talked to the residents down there, and they're very pleased with a lot of the attention here from the beach. I do want to make note. I, you found yours funny. I find this one funny about the two females at 1.15 in the morning. They realize that it's not a new beach. <laughs> <laughs> and they need clothing when they go to the beach. So I'd like to thank your officers, Chief. I won't name them for the discretion they did handling that. Mr. Uh, Chairman, this Mr. Rose, the greatest show on earth. <laughs> I mean, this, is a, this is a good beginning, Greg, and, 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 I, and I appreciate, and there is no other shoe to fall. I appreciate you taking the initiative there are some things we got to look at. If you're going to make parking inside for Dudley residents only, but you're going to sell day or season passes to non-residents, where the hell are they going to park? They're going to park somewhere if you close off Mason Road. Signage has got to be clear, distinct, and let people know that you know that it's open to Dudley residents only or not. That they have to present an ID to lifeguards or to uh, to staff. And if they don't, they'll be asked to leave, police will be caught. I mean, we've got to make the signage clear. We've got to limit access without building a fortress. And we've got to decide if we want it to be Dudley, Dudley, Dudley residents alone or if we want to open it up to other people. But this is a good beginning, and I'm anxious to see what a, despite what was just talked about, a somewhat fleshed out version would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fox, um, I'm very happy to see that we're making progress on moving the beach forward. Um, very happy to see that we're, we have an article that's coming up for the town meeting that I totally support that we fund the beach for lifeguards. Um, we've had a wonderful beach committee that have worked very, very hard with uh, 5K races. And, however, the comment is correct that you can't ask these people to do it forever. So, um, I'm very glad to see that this is in the process. You know, I agree. I think we're moving in the right direction. I think there should be some funding, some kind of mechanism for the town meeting or to the board. And if we're going to expand it to non dudley residents, we have to find a figure that provides some funding and maybe we'll also be a little prohibitive for people that come and they think it's free. <coughs> and what's the, I don't they charge out of town, but it's big enough that they come the extra six miles to Out Beach. So I think this little hidden gem has been free long enough, and I, I think we're heading in the right direction. I agree, Mr. Chairman. I think that we have to make a commitment. If we're going to run a beach, we need to run a beach. If we can't afford it, then we need to close it. That, there's no answering right. If we can't do it right, it's going to be a public safety hazard we need to close it. So we should make a commitment now to fund not just the lifeguards who go on the water cycle, but to fund the capital expense associated with running it the right way. You know, I still I still think if we try to do it through a vendor, let a vendor be responsible, let them pay us with some kind of proof of insurance, let the vendor be responsible, he has to understand W people free. They can put a uh, small you know, Italian ice pot down there, whatever, they can make some money selling waters or whatever. I think that may be something we can look at. Let that person be responsible for wristbands or passes, whatever, whatever we decide to handle. Just remember this. Out, 
without a policy as to who can use it, without an idea of how many hours a week it will be open, without an idea if it will be open to W residents or everyone, and without an idea of what kind of traffic, we're not going to get these substantive bids from any vendors to be there for any length of time. So that's part of the fleshing out that we need to work on. Right. I'm not, that wasn't suggesting that. I mean, actually, a solution. Right. That may be something. That's a good idea, though. Three, four, five yeah. minutes. Yeah. That's a box. Um, Michelle, I would ask, if, if possible, that you would contact the Beach Committee and just give them a quick update as to what we're doing and what we're thinking so that they don't feel that they're left out mm -hmm. in case they have some important ideas or questions they'd like to ask. Uh, courtesy to them, we should please let them know what we're thinking. Absolutely. Anything further on the beach? Chiefs? Yeah, I think we're good. Next up, 8H, Central Mass Stormwater Co Coalition Intermunicipal Agreement. Mr. Malcolm. So, Billy is part of the Regional Stormwater Coalition of Central Mass, which um, allows us to comply with the federal law that we examine and um, test our stormwater. It's, a, it's an onerous federal law that every city and town uh, needs to comply with. And so this coalition, I'm sure that the, the former town administrator had informed you, was assembled to, to assist us in hiring an engineer and getting the technical expertise to walk our way through this process. Our, our cost is, um, $4,000 a year, and when I went back to see if we have the $4,000 in hand, we don't. <coughs> we approved for stormwater a uh, token amount. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do is um, not sign the Minnesota agreement until we get funding appropriation at the county, because um, we need to appropriate $4,000. Is this an unfunded, uh, un unfunded. <laughs> unfunded mandate? Absolutely. State or federal? Federal. Can we tell them to go pound sand? <laughs> and our peril. I mean, what's the worst they can do? Oh, they, they, if you recall, the city of Worcester was tied up in knots with the with EPA over this issue. Because the city's costs were in the many millions of dollars. And I think they ended up losing. Yeah, we lost one year too. Yeah, right? Window we report. That was what I was saying. Oh. Uh, the stormwater report. There was. There was. They, they still require us to report annually of it on our stormwater activities. That's mm -hmm. one of the requirements that we have. No, no grant money. No grant money. No, no grant money. Um, but this, this coalition works pretty well together, and, and it really is the best way to solve a, a difficult problem. Yep. All right, so we're going to. Postpone to a date to be determined, yes. Perfect. Chief, please department, discussion regarding an administrative assistant. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've had some discussions preliminary with the uh, town administrator. Uh, uh, the unfortunate passing of uh, Pam Daniels has kind of brought on a, a need that we had to address for quite some time. I think we're moving in this direction where uh, we're in need of some type of administrative assistance help on uh, the farm. Uh, especially we see it now too, it's going to the regional dispatch, uh, uh, how somebody in the building is a valuable service, especially during the day during the week. Uh, so over the last month or so, uh, we've divvied up all the different jobs that have taken place in there, and between myself and uh, my other full-time staff, we're probably putting in probably a good 20 or 30 hours a week just doing uh, everything from details to uh, payroll to uh, reports and uh, through the gamut uh, that we, we, need to, uh, we need to address the situation. It was kind of waiting for a long time, and uh, we've been doing this for like about 10 hours a week. And unfortunately, I had a person that was able to do a lot of these things efficiently. But uh, the time has come just to address that type of situation. So the way I have right now, I'll be able to fund it for half the year within the time and budget, at least fund the salary of the position. Town Administrator really has put on the warrant a, uh, uh, an article for we'll have to find what kind of cost would be for it. Uh, but I think uh, I'd just like to uh, get the endorsement of the board to move ahead in that direction. Uh, the idea is I want to do some remodeling to the downstairs dispatch center. Since now we've removed a lot of the equipment out of there, I want to make it more user-friendly in that area and set up a desk and everything in that location for this person to use and so they can be available down there during the day during the week and solve a lot of the, I mean, a lot 
lot of the business that takes place in there, and then again perform a lot of the administrative functions of the department. So that's just the direction that we're moving in, and uh, I thank the administrator for his, his support. See, prior to um, Sergeant Daniels retiring and taking over that, how was all that work done before? That was all through full-time staff or dispatch staff at the time. So most of the jobs that were done were done by people that were in-house, which is why after she retired, she had been doing a lot of that work while she was working full-time. So it just made sense to bring somebody on who was already doing all the work and pay them a part-time salary to do it. Uh, still a great deal of the process is still done by a lot of people in the department. Uh, for example, firearms license and Channel Boyd does all that stuff for us. He does all the administrative stuff with all the paperwork and everything else that goes with it. Uh, just associated with that. So a lot of that do you now passed off to somebody else to do. Isn't that funding that mechanism funded for the private class? Yeah, well there is, yeah, but I'm just talking about the time for people to do that stuff. So again, some of those funds for the permits can be redirected towards you know, the personnel costs or those are some things that could be filtered in some way to do that. Um, but it's been waiting for a long time. We, we, we bill um, over $300,000 a year for these details. And so you're talking, you know, that generates administrative fees and everything else that goes with that. But it's a great deal and a time consuming process to follow all this up. And it goes on Mr. Fox on the finance board years ago and we had an issue with our account that was in the red. We were able to bring it back into the black. We had to the panel out for her actions doing that uh, throughout the years. That's something you really have to stay on top of. And that's, that's basically a full-time full -time thing. So right now I have myself and Jim and Issa, the two of us have been doing this every week, so we're spending probably about a good eight towels a week just on that, between the two of us, uh, getting that whole thing done. So um, it, is, it is time for somebody to do that. And so I think it's a way to kill two birds with one stone, to have somebody in there kind of handle the business during the day, uh, dispatch area, and be able to provide all this service for the uh, administrative work that needs to be done. See, the people, especially the bigger contractors, National Grid, uh, on top of my head, do they prepay when they want a detail? They don't, why not? How come some, they come in and say we need someone for eight hours? How come we don't tell them? So the corporations? Free? No. I mean, actually, you want to know the worst ones? Probably the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts are one of the worst ones. Yeah, but why, why don't we tell them? Ask anybody who plows snow to see when they get paid their snow, their snow accounts. Why don't we tell them if you need someone for eight hours, you, you give us a check, we give you an offer seven, and you only need for six, we'll give you a rebate, or we credit you for the next time. Why, why? You, you won't be able to do that with, not with, uh, not with the corp large corporations like that. Or how about, like, yeah. show contract that a guy You can, I mean, in some ways, the smaller <coughs> ones, you're more, you're more apt to do that. Um, the bigger operations, between everything running through payroll and everything else that they do through the process, uh, it being able, you know, possible to do something like that. Smaller contractors, I think it is something that you could do, especially if it was a person that you had no idea about or whatever it is, just to make sure that you're, you're insured some kind of pain. <laughs> but for the most part, with everybody, we've, uh, we've recovered most of the funding over, over the past. Uh, so I think we've been finishing the black again this past year. So it is something that we're at least uh, gathering and consistently going with. But it does, it takes a great deal of time. It takes a great deal of time to follow. Well, is that feasible? Should we have people pay as they need? Only if there are if there are people that have, are delinquent and haven't made a whole lot, then the chief absolutely does that. So if there's any danger that someone won't pay, he will bill that person in advance and make an exception. And, and, and that's the practice that's in place. Um, but I just want to say that the fact that the detail account operates in the black is pretty rare. Most towns run a deficit in their detail account exactly for the reason that I stated. Something gets billed out, the contractor goes out of business, they declare bankruptcy, whatever it is, and the bill doesn't get paid, the account runs in the red. We have to pay the person, the, the officer, the account runs in the red, and the town needs to get an appropriation account. That doesn't happen in Dudley, and that's a, a tribute to uh, the, the late Pam Daniels, who did, did a very good job. Chief, can we see those numbers at a future meeting? Or which numbers? Black, how far ahead you know, if you're at 100% collection or, you know what Yeah, I, mean? I think it'd be more probably, I think the, uh, the auditors would go through all that, so I think that's all your auditing report. Right, I, I can get that from the auditing report. Yeah, okay. they, they're the ones that, uh, that verify and uh, do all that. Okay. We I have until September 1st every year to gather uh, payments from the previous fiscal year, so that's when we we're finishing up. We have to go come in and do the work. Okay, I achieved that, Mr. Fox. No, I'm all well set. I'm all set. Fox. 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 Yeah. Um, I've talked to the chief about this a little bit. And 
I also realize that he's lost his dispatchers that were doing a portion of this work. I do believe he could hire somebody at a lesser hourly rate than what we were previously paying. I'm also very surprised at the number of emails that we get of what is going on in town. Every single one of those needs a report, needs a follow-up, or needs a court hearing or something. And I think the volume has increased over the years, and I think it's time to look at this. No. I, I, I'd like to see a job description. That's number one. Thanks, Bill. Right. Then I'd like to uh, see a range of hours that this person would be working strictly in clerical work for the police department. I'd like to know how it is to be funded, whether it's offset or through appropriation or combination. I'd also like to see from the highway department, supervisor, superintendent, and the uh, fire chief, how many hours a week uh, they currently spend on strictly clerical work that could be done by another staff person who is a clerk. I want the whole problem to be in front of us to see what the whole range is that we have to deal with here. Because as long as we keep these folks doing clerical things, then they're not doing chief and superintendent work. I just, I'd like to get a handle on that. And I don't have a handle on that. Well, Andy, was it the highway department at one time budgeted eight hours a week? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. And you took it over because there were some issues. Well, she left. Well, Mary left, and then I guess the money and the budget wasn't wasn't there for her. And, and I, I think that if I remember correctly, the secretary works four days a week for selection. Right, one day. And one day for me. Wednesdays. And then they cut the pay, they cut the salary out of the highway department. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they slept in one of the secretary at five days. So let's take a look at all of this, because I think it, the whole thing is a geschmuckt that we need to be aware of. Kashmak means a mess, I agree. Yes, good <laughs> question. <laughs> Chief, does the, does the Western Police Department benefit at all from the, the dispatches being on site? And do they, mm -hmm. do they still benefit from the dispatches doing unrelated duties? Oh, I think so, yes. Yes, because they probably well, have two people over there at that time, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. So why can't we ship some of our stuff over there? Yeah. Right, I mean, we well, yeah, shift. I mean, we've been shifting some prisoners over there back. That's that's going back in, and they, they oh, do really say they do a lot of they, they do most of the uh, the paperwork that has to be generated through uh, records and different things for uh, state checks and queries and all that stuff. That's all that's all generated from there and sent down to our department. So they do generate a lot more of the paperwork there. So we do get out of it and done Yeah, and I'm just talking about the physical person in the building. That's where yeah. that's where the big thing uh, comes in. You know, and I think it's just anything else too. It's it's going to take a lot of that load off of somebody comes in for something, and now somebody has to come off the street and handle things to do that. When someone in the, the office could handle that type of uh, type of business, and also provide the uh, all the paperwork from there. Now, certainly, if any board members want to come down, probably doing payroll on Friday. If you want to come down sometime, feel free to come down and, and have a sit, and we'll uh, we'll over with it, and you can get a good bird's eye view of what's going on. <laughs> Oh, I don't know you, Chief. I just I want to make sure that we're reaping a little bit of benefit as well as the website. Right, because we moved into this dispatch center to, to save money and streamline processes, and I don't want to start branching off of it. No, well, I think you're looking at a couple. We, we had, I mean, I raised the issue when it came up before. I mean, there, there, was, there is some station coverage we're going to have to have. You know, I've worked out there at the intern program to kind of save some money. There. You do need some of that stuff. You know, then we're bringing on some extra people, so there's some people around, so there are times you don't have anybody there. But there are times too when, again, day-to-day -day business goes on in that town hall, or there's meetings going on, there's other things happening. People are coming in and out of that building, and there's questions being asked, and people needing service at the, at the counter. And even if they come in and hit the button to call Webster, well, Webster's going to send one of our guys down to answer that situation. So we're going to have to deal with that one way or the other. So that that's just that's a constant issue. That's there. Um, and most other places that close at a certain time, they close. We don't close. So it's, one of the things we're, uh, we're adjusting for life. 
Anybody else? Yeah, uh, Chief. Thanks. I support this in concept. Um, I like the idea of what, what intrigued me was. I know we all we have admin type activities that we need to cover. To Paul's point, which is true, you guys can focus more on, on your jobs. But um, the customer service aspect of having somebody more available and having it user friendly at the town hall. If we could somehow combine into that, <coughs> that would be pretty nice. Yeah, it could be a situation where at some point too, where the uh, you know, person who drop off a payment down there for something or whatever it is, it could, mm -hmm. they, they could be at, at some point, you know, where certain things could take place at certain times. Yeah, more hands available. Yes, okay, yeah, that's all. I think just, I mean, just to just have somebody answer some questions down there, because we handle a lot of questions at the window for different offices that are in the town hall. <coughs> somebody happens to stop in, nobody was there, or somebody comes in, right? They'll inquire questions about things that will we'll provide a lot of information so at, the, at that so town. Okay. Yeah, I thought the town ministry has a job description he was reviewing and everything like that, so some things that are available. Okay. We can get so you whatever we're on the right track. Get you whatever you need. We can include pay scale in that too, please. Where it's going to, where it's going to fall. Because I don't want to, still waiting for some information on that last personnel hiring. I want to just make sure we have three people in the right spot. Right? Anybody else? Here we go, move on to K. Approve the pilot agreement for sold facility at 55 million yards the road. What happened to Jimmy? Oh, sorry. Don't forget, Jay. We're going to cancel that this year. Oh, we do. <laughs> Trick or treat hours, Saturday, October 31st, 2015, 5.30 to 7.30. Chief, is that in line with Webster? At the same time as Webster, yes. I was consulted with Chief Benton, so Security we're kind of doing it at the same time. <laughs> that was the 31st, and that's what people expect anyway. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'm just going to simply move that we accept the Chief's recommendation and authorize trick-or-treating hours on Saturday, October 31st, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Second. Unanimous. <laughs> Everybody agrees with me. Four seconds. Uh, approved pilot agreement for sold facility, 55 billion dollars. I'm going to ask you to hold on this and receive the signed copy back. Right. Okay. 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 Hold, hold. Um, I don't want to commit to the next meeting because I'm waiting for it to come back. Are you bringing it up? Okay. I'll bring it up. I'll put it on the agenda. It could be the meeting on the fifth. It could be after that. Yeah. The, the discussions are done. Okay. Nice. Student rep, Alex, welcome back. Good to be back. Uh, Prior sports are being issued this Friday, and it's uh, very amazing that we're already a month into school, and it's gone by very fast. Uh, SATs are this Saturday for all juniors and seniors willing to take it, and to take the burden of getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning to go take a very stressful test. The Thanksgiving game is in fact home this year. I have clarified that with a numerous amount of people at the school, so that will be very entertaining on the new field. And the football team is away at Neshoba this Friday if anyone's willing to make the truck out to Neshoba. And next Thursday and Friday, we do not have any school. Uh, Thursday is actually a half day, and then Friday we have no school due to professional development day. And we have no school that day the 12th for Columbus Day, so that's a nice four and a half day weekend for all. Well, you've been there for a month. You yeah. Time mm -hmm. off. yeah. 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 You can get to seven on Saturday. Yeah. We don't want to stretch you out. Yeah. yeah. So you got to take it easy on us. Seventeen so much energy. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like I have a job. One day. <laughs> Anything else, Alex? No, I'm not sure. Okay, board member comments. Mr. Joseph. Just to acknowledge that uh, Nancy Runkle, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, has accepted uh, another position at a different town. Uh, Nancy was here for quite a few years and took us through a number of interesting uh, scenarios. I wish her well, uh, Godspeed, and I hope she enjoys her new job. Mr. Fox. Um, I'd like to know what the status is of the cell tower on Schofield Avenue where the sewer, sewer plant is. We had that approved and it's been hanging there for a couple of years now. I can tell you, we, uh, we did a solicitation in RFP and we got no responses. So I know that there was some they previously indicated an interest uh, that 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 group never responded to the RFP. We can reissue it with a new date on it. We'll do the same thing all over again. 
Okay, so there's no action on that at all. Um, other than the fact that we've done all the like work, we advertise, Michelle knows we had the, the, the document that we prepared, we expected that uh, people would come in, no one came in. Okay, thank you. Could I have Ms. Jemini? Yes. Could you call uh, the, the company that was interested for attendance, which I think was Verizon? AT&T. 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 And ask them uh, why they didn't respond to the RFP. <coughs> Sometimes there's good reasons, and we ought to know what those reasons are. Mr. Nazi? Uh, I just echo Mr. Joseph. Um, Nancy Rucker was here a long time. I was on the planning board when she was hired. Interesting was a good choice of words. Uh, there was a lot, of, a lot of things going on when Nancy got hired. She kind of had hit the ground running. Some things we did well on, some things we didn't, not her fault. I think we've got things going in the direction. We can thank her for her efforts in the planning office. Um, this time, that's all I have. Could we ask that the town administrator give us a report uh, in some manner soon after discussion with the planning board as to what their, what their proposed time frame is for replacing her on what kind of basis? Not that we have any anything other than a, you know, a real interest in, in what they do do? Well, we got the DPW committee, Paul. We have the DPW study committee coming up, and currently there's two, two of the four positions that are mostly affected. They could sue the superintendent as an interim and go be a planning office. Yeah. I'd like to see what Craig's going to call his report coming up. There's a meeting. Yep. Let's see where, that, where that's going to end up. Yeah, I promise. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I did while the discussion was going on. I promised that the uh, meeting that this, we had with the Water and Sewer Commissioners um, 12 days ago that we would uh, get staff together and develop a plan for the cost savings. And so that meeting is going to take place this week. It's a staff meeting, it's not a public meeting. But I will then report back to the board and assemble the committee that you refer to to review those results. Great. Time is fair report. Um, there is a proposed new solar generation facility which is going on land at the intersection of Center Road and Farley Roads. It's uh, a field right now, as so you know. It's in the I-43 zone, so it's industrial. And um, you received a copy of the letter that I've attached to a copy of the plan to my report from um, NextHand, who would be interested in um, engaging in discussions relative to the payment, payment of the tax facility uh, this. This would not be um, changed. The planning board did submit an article for fall town meeting um, with some restrictions on where commercial solar generation facilities can be located and they would be located as I understand the I-43, which this parcel would be, the I-130, which is industrial, and the town landfill. So that's just an FYI to you that we've got a proposal coming in with a warrant article proposal for the planning board that looks to seek uh, placing restrictions on these things from being located in residential neighborhoods. Two quick questions on that. Of uh, course, why would they, I know the chairman stands, why would they restrict it in the light industrial zone in any stand? Don't we have some kind of special line on that landfill if we start allowing people to dig and they puncture that, you were saying one time? The line at the light knob is only in the valley. It's not on, not not on the top. top. It doesn't cover the whole bus. So they, they can dig on top of that? Okay. I can't speak to your other question because the work article was just submitted that you might want to ask the, uh, the planning board if they want submit a report as to why, but it, it's not, the MI-43 is not included in it. Yeah. You find out, I know I said right now, I'm going to get something to write for Sure. Thank you. Um, the board had brought to my attention some concern about residents about traffic and safety on uh, Brandon Road, and so I wanted to report to you that there's a meeting week from today with residents and the chief and um, I was superintendent for joining the list of the residents and back to the recommendations. Um, 
signboard under five. So um, the sign that we have up front, the W Municipal Center, was a sign that was migrated from Ozanks in the old Municipal Center Town Hall. And it was done back in the days of the Tobacco Control Program, which means it's at least 20 years old. Yes. Falling apart. And rather than investing uh, money in uh, replacing that with a manual sign, I met with the, the um, head librarian, and she's also interested in creating an electronic sign for the library on Schofield Avenue. And we met with a vendor who does um, such a thing, and I think the proposal has merit. It allows us to get information out to the public. It's fully automated. It's color. Um, it's 21st century. On the other hand, I don't feel that it's something that the town meeting should probably money for. I'm not asking that that take place. I would ask that if you support the concept, um, we reach out and see what the public, if the public can help, or any service organizations that are in the might be able to help us. The library has a grant that they're able to do it through. I looked at a grant. I looked at a grant for this purpose, um, and was encouraged that we might be able to get it. And we didn't meet the income eligibility guidelines of the grant, which are ten months. We are too high. So we, I would not have come before you if we could have found a grant, but we can't find one. So uh, the thought is if you, if you support the idea of an electronic sign, I would appreciate uh, help in terms of maybe just a quick contact with some of the service groups in town um, to see if they might be able to help us. We will, we will embark and see if we get the thing replaced um, for it. Now we give them yeah, recognition on that sign donated by if somebody donates. Yeah, if you, I've actually seen them um, in other communities, that's exactly what it says. I know the Chief's speed limit uh, register has a donor who donated rather than that. Yeah. Shepherd Hill's got a pain on their field. It's exactly what it would be two sided, so there'd be two electronic signs. I believe it would be the old 197. What is that? 197. What do we have? What do you mean? I'm sorry. The, um, the, did you have a meeting with DOT about yeah. 197 yeah. done where there's a lot of accidents? Yes. Do you want to hold off on the details of that? No, I'd be happy to bring it up right now. I just wanted to report to you that I did meet with um, the Mass DOT, and um, it was the section of road between Lions Road and um, Center Road. And uh, as you know, if you've driven down there, the right wing's going to be at least five or six tall. And people who would be pulling out of either of those intersections on the Route 197, they really can't see. So Mass DOT came out, and um, we talked, and we suggested to them there needs to be some signage, particularly if um, westbound on Route 197 at Center Road, and eastbound going up the hill um, on Route 197 at Lyons Street. Those seem to be the, the critical areas. There needs to be some vege vegetation needs to be cut back and removed, and I know the highway department has done some of that. And there needs to be some stone riprap put in because what happens you cut the vegetation back and it'll come right back again. States seem to be um, positive in terms of putting it on their list of, of things that they want to have happen. So is that around 218 was that? Yeah. Around 218 um, But you know, again, I don't know if you can offer any other. Comments and suggestions, you know the word it is. No, it was, it was a very good meeting, and uh, like, if you said uh, eastbound coming up the hill, like uh, pulling out of Ball Road, you have to see that bank and cut back uh, several feet probably, but it blocks that whole corner. Some cars coming up there at 45, 50 miles on, you're trying to cross the road, you know, you're, you're going to get people. Well, it seems like the only time we had action was a year or two ago, that there was the accident that had the fatality in it. The person didn't die because of the accident, but remember the lady died? And like a week later, the state was out there. They cut everything back and looked great. But that, was, that was down on Center Road. Right, that's we would cut that a couple of times. Oh, I mean, it was safety but issues, but I mean, uh, you know, you call a state and they're busy or whatever reason they have that they don't show up in time. Right. Like so you say, until they had the accident, then they were out there in full force. Yeah, yeah six guys yeah. and they cleaned it up beautiful. And that's the last time you've seen anybody there. Right. Yeah, 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 the the discussions we had was, was at least that there was some quick fixes to it that they should be able to handle. That was the thing. Easy. It's not a lot of. There's not a lot of work. Uh, a lot of it could be helped out if you, if you cut the vegetation down and put like a, a weed barrier down and you know yeah. uh, spread across right. stone over to keep the road from coming back you could probably save a lot of time and, and injuries. Mr. Joseph. Back to the electronic sign. 
That's a very competitive field. There's a lot of great companies out there. Probably one of the first and still one of the strongest is Dactronics. I would hope that we don't take the word of a vendor, but instead do up specs and invite some bids. It is a very competitive field. I would also ask that we remember that a ground level, eye level sign either can't be near the road, in which case it loses some of its effectiveness, or has to be elevated above eye level so it can be seen easily and still allow vision both ways on the highway. And I hope that that will be, those things will be considered when you put together the specs. And, and there are some, if not eager, certainly willing, civic-minded people uh, for whom the cost of a sign and installation uh, would not be out of the question if they are reasonably approached on the subject. And any, any sign would have to meet all requirements anyway, right? Or, I mean, I know, generally speaking, municipal structures would accept certain provisions, but a sign wouldn't be placed. Wouldn't be any larger than the sign that's there. Right. right. So the whole thing. This <coughs> just makes a good point. It needs to be. And, and access to power. You can you can actually do it remotely. You don't even need hot wiring anymore. Do solar. Like you do on highway, you do solar panel yeah. on top. Do that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe next gen like that. Really? Nice. Well, I don't know. Well, just help us. Are we all done? Uh, yeah. I think you're still screwed. We all done. Departmental fire and EMS. That's actually not. Please. Just the. Uh, Things yeah, well, I want to thank uh, Harrington Hospital and also all the residents. We had a drug kickback on Saturday. We collected about five live boxes of, uh, of prescription medications. Good the biggest thing was we had uh, an overflow of needles. Uh, we, they gave us three live, live bins and we actually filled uh, two of the cardboard boxes with, uh, with some of after that. So, uh, Hopefully it was like uh, sugar or insulin. Well, that's, yeah, I think it's most of the time. But then people, you know, looking to get rid of them, and I think the problem is some of the pharmacies not taking them anymore. Uh, and so one of the things that I've reached out to 24 Trauma, they're uh, what they have is they clean up basically crime scenes and things like that. Uh, they're gonna be able to get us some uh, bins that we can put in the lobby so we can drop <coughs> those. Uh, sure. So Great. that's one thing to we'll look at there. And I'm also I'm also inquiring. I checked with some of the folks from Webster. But Webster has a has a like a year-round drop box for these prescription medications. And then you can make one just to get rid of them, so we can do it year-round, just have it in the, in the lobby. You can drop them in whatever they want to get rid of them. So we're gonna have two of those things going on there. Uh, one other final thing I'm just looking at, and just, it's just some food for thought, but uh, down the line, probably in the springtime, I'm actually looking at uh, exploring the possibility of adding tasers. That's a uh, hey, yeah. That's the new, the newest thing. They've been around for quite a while, you know, so <laughs> had some time to do some, some, uh, you know, looking into it, and it, it's just another viable option for some way. So looking into the policies, looking into different things, but it's just something maybe look at down the line for the springtime. Um, it definitely would have come in handy in some cases. Uh, you know, we had a case I had an officer get hurt, and they had to work about two or three weeks. So the guy was a real, uh, real problem. So. Uh, there's some things now, it's, it's just one of those other things that's kind of in the uh, approved uses of force before you get uh, to the point where you have to shoot somebody. So you, want to use all, you want to use all your tools before you get there. So there's another thing I'm looking at in the springtime. Thanks, Chief. Craig, all set? Right now, board members all set? Yes. Michelle, all set? We'll be adjourned. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Massey. Second. Mr. Ruder. Mr. Horn. Up. Just wanted to thank the board is working on some planning board issues that have come up over the last couple of weeks. Um, one of them was already mentioned, the departure uh, of the town um, planner. Um, there was an email that went out that I saw um, that one of the uh, town hall, uh, I think I don't know the title is, but Floyd, Joan Gardecki, was temporarily working in the office, and I don't know if she's still there or not, but um, there isn't really anyone on the planning board that has the, the time to try the uh, ability to go down and review everything that needs to be reviewed before I answer the departure on Friday as to where things are and how things are uh, kept. 
So I was hoping that um, maybe this board could authorize um, someone from the town hall to go in and whatever it takes an hour or two hours just to review what's, what's there and um, have some knowledge of it. There's nobody that I'm aware of on the funding board that knows where anything is kept as far as the office goes. The only person who had to keep the office was Nancy. So. Well, the, the answer is <coughs> simple. No, we can't. I'm going to tell you why. It's not an item on the agenda. We can't authorize funding. An item that's not publicized. So what we can do is we can, you can authorize, Mr. Chairman, the town administrator, to look into the uh, staffing needs of the uh, planning board and to make whatever accommodation short term can be made and to give us a recommendation. That we can do at this meeting. Right, can I fall under I'm not public comment? I'm going to say information on something that's not on the agenda that wasn't reasonably anticipated. Yep. I understand what you're exactly what you're looking for. You don't need to discuss any more if you don't need to. Okay, I know, I know exactly what you want. You and I had a conversation with the planner today exactly about what you're coming out. You handle it. I've actually done the plan on that. Is there any other thing that I want to mention? Um, I think um, most of you should be aware if you're not, you, 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 you will be aware now. Uh, September 22nd, the planning board has issued a determination by the Attorney General's office that there was a violation of the local meeting law. And uh, I believe the next step for us is to um, contact them for a public hearing. Uh, that's to be determined because Greg has been in touch with, the, as you know, Mr. Chairman, he been with town council uh, based on subsequent actions and agreements that have been authorized and signed. Uh, what, if anything, has to be undone and what does not have to be undone. So I was just going to ask for this board to uh, authorize town council to review it and see what's the next step for us. We don't have any attorneys on the planning board. Well, the good thing is the board doesn't have to. Any, any use of town council has been allowed yeah, by the town administration. And, and, and I don't want to delay because when I became aware of the letter, you know, you're going to be proactive on something like this. Could be any appeal period. And so we best make sure that we're not talking about the wrong way. I sent out a request to council today to review that and, and come back to us with some recommendations. Keep us in the loop, right? And the only other thing that I wanted to mention to this board was um, a topic that was discussed at a previous meeting about children farms. Um, what is commenced over there? There's a uh, uh, raising of the structures going on, and I believe the paving is going to be done this year. And um, I didn't attend the last planning board meeting. I had a, a wait to attend instead of the last planning board meeting. But the previous planning board meeting, many of the homeowners again returned to the planning board meeting with uh, questions as to if if or if they could get uh, town filing for next year for this year coming and who they who they need to talk to and I recommended that they come to this this board meeting that you guys are uh, highway supervisors and um, talk with this board. Is the work that's being done including bringing the roads up to the height of the manhole? Yes. Okay, and I I would not recommend that we do any plowing with those suckers two, three, four inches above grade. And, 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 and I hope I hope that whatever work is being done and whatever covenants or agreements are being reached will not in fact, and I give fair warning, will not in fact expose the town to any future liability. We said that when we first discussed this and I want to reiterate that. Well, I think that we also we need to have a determination from the planning board on that <coughs> list of work that was not going to be completed that was originally agreed in the original covenant you got a list of so you guys had you had to do another public hearing right to even consider amending a covenant it depends if it's going to be major or minor we haven't had a public hearing yet it's, it's not determined what's going to be left out of the covenant if it's going to be a major change or a minor change mr chairman so we can really Highway superintendent, we have to see how. I agree. Well, we need to we need to find out 
because I'm doing some pretty substantial things in that list. Right. Mm -hmm. Which I would consider what I would think would trigger the agent that's out of our purview. Thanks, Guy. Thanks, Guy. Thanks, Guy. Now I'm going to carry it. Sorry. Multiple. Aye. 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 Aye